This video is about different modes of nutrition in microorganisms. So, based on the source of carbon that microorganisms need for their growth, microorganisms then can be divided into two groups, including autotrophs and heterotrophs. Auto means self, trope means nourishment. So autotrophs means self nourishment. This kind of microorganisms could produce their own food. Or to be more specific, they could convert carbon dioxide into organic compounds. And this can be done through the process of photosynthesis. Most of photosynthetic microorganisms are autotrophic. For example, algae and cyanobacteria. Now we move to hetero heterotrophs. Heterotrophs can't produce their own food. That means they need to use an organic carbon source from their surroundings. This kind of microorganisms extract energy from organic compounds through the process of cellular respirations, which can be done under uh, anaerobic or aerobic conditions, as well as the fermentation process. So, fermentation. This can be done in respiration. Most of microorganisms are heterotrophic. Bacteria, most of bacteria, fungi, slumos. And protists like animal like a protist, sorry. Animal like protist. Now we move to the second system which classify microorganisms based on the source of energy or where they obtain energy from. If microorganisms obtain energy from chemicals, then they are said to be chemotrophs or chemotrophic organisms. If they obtain energy from light, then they are said to be phototrophs or phototrophic microorganisms. Chemotrophs can be further divided into Chemo organotroph and chemo lithotrophs.
organ nodules extract energy from organic compounds and this could be done through the process of either anaerobic or aerobic respiration or fermentation For example, in a respiration process, glucose is oxidized into carbon dioxide and water. But most importantly, that process generates lots of ATPs or energies. This is an energy. Okay, so it balances. Huh? Yeah. Many microorganisms are chemoorganotrophic. Again, most of bacteria fungi. Slammos animal like vortex. So we can see that chemoorganotrophs are actually heterotrophic microorganisms because they need to realize on an existing organic carbon source for energy. How about chemolithotrophs? Chemolithotrophs, in contrast, can extract energy from inorganic compounds or inorganic chemicals for energy. So inorganic chemicals can be like uh, hydrogen gas, ammonium, or hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen sulfur, for example, hydrogen bacteria can oxidize hydrogen gas into water and energy right so this can be done by hydrogen bacteria other bacteria which are chemolithotrophic, including nitrogen fixing bacteria and um, sulfur, a purple sulfur. Bacteria So next we move to photojobs Again photojobs include microorganisms which extract energy from light Basically, this kind of microorganisms can photosynthesize. However, we can further divide them into two smaller groups based on the 
presence or the absence of oxygen in their photosynthetic processes. So based on that, we have the N oxide genic phototopes. And oxide or oxygenic phototopes. Oxygenic phototopes produce oxygen in their photosynthetic process. The reaction is a carbon dioxide water organic compounds for example glucose oxygen right and uh, it imbalances I'm so sick here yeah. examples of Oxygenic photodots are again algae, cyanobacteria, about an oxygenic photodots. We again can further divide them into two subgroups including photo autotopes. Photo heterotopes. So photo autotopes can produce organic carbon compounds from carbon dioxide. However, they do not generate oxygen because the electron donor in this case is not water but some other inorganic chemicals like hydrogen sulfur. An example of the reaction would be and sulfur and um, carbon dioxide we still get sugars but instead of oxygen we have uh, sulfur and so this is mm. Examples of photo autotopes are verbal sulfur, bacteria, and green sulfur bacteria. So, what about photoheterotrophs? Photoheterotrophs can photosynthesize 
However, they can't convert carbon dioxide into organic compounds. What they could do is that they could convert small, small organic carbon molecules or compounds like uh, pyruvic acid, pyruvate into bigger molecule in this process required light examples of photoheterotrophic microorganisms are sulfur or purple bacteria, purple non-sulfur bacteria. So we are done with the classification of microorganisms based on their source of carbon and source of energy. Now I will zoom it out so you can see the entire system. You can see that these two systems somewhat overlap each other. Heterotrophs are actually chemo-organotrophs, right? And most of most of phototrophic microorganisms are autotrophs, except for the case of photoheterotrophs. This kind of microorganisms can photosynthesize, however, they still need an organic carbon source for their growth.